Hi guys, welcome to Recap Bro. In today's video, we will be going through the 2020 drama movie, The Banker. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. Let's get started. The movie begins with a man talking about hearings on federally insured banks, which are the cornerstone of American capitalism. In 1965 at Washington DC, a man whose name is Bernard can be seen thinking deeply and staring at the window. A man said to him, be careful in there, Bernard they want to make an example out of you. Bernard then put on his glass and went to the hearing. Back in Willis, Texas in 1939, Bernard can be seen when he was a young boy polishing a white man's shoe, he was tossed a coin for the work done. Bernard had jotted every sentence said about real estate investment and contributed to the men's discussion. They were surprised seeing a young lad having ideas on real estate investing. They said, you're going places in future, too bad you're black. Bernard can be seen leaning on a wall outside an office listening to the discussion some white men were having. Hey, what are you doing up there boy? Are you spying on these white people's business? Huh? A man caught him, then ran off. At night, his father scolded him for eavesdropping on the white man and told him what the consequences of his action could be, but Bernard said. I was just trying to learn how they make money. His father scanned through his book and said. You're talented but born of the wrong color. A white man won't let into their business, irrespective of how good you are. Then he replied, maybe not in this country, maybe elsewhere, but I'm going to come back to Texas and be a big time real estate investor in this country as well. In 1954, at Los Angeles, young Bernard drove his family to his uncle-in-law's place and during supper, the man asked what he would do for a living, then he said he's going into real estate investing but the man laughed and asked again. Bernard replied that he was going to survive on his savings till he got a hang of real estate investment. Due to the way the man spoke, Bernard left the dining angry, his wife, came to meet him in the room when done eating. She said, I know this isn't much. Bernard said, yeah, I don't plan on staying here for long I will take you and our son out of this shed very soon and they smiled. Before leaving the man house, his uncle-in-law apologized about his previous night behavior. The next day, Bernard dropped his cousin off at a place, who introduced him to Matt. He then went to a different neighborhood, checked houses that are vacant and inquired information from their owners. Later, he took his wife Eunice to check out the vacant house he wants to buy, but his wife worried that it was expensive. He said, we do have enough money to pay, but nothing will be left for fixing it up. Eunice then suggested going to meet a friend, Joe. They met Joe in the club puffing cigarettes, Joe offered him a drink. A while later, he left the club angrily, while Eunice tried convincing him you got the wrong idea about him. But he said, no, I don't want to do business with that man. Eunice responded back, if you don't want to, then you better make Barker come down on his price. Next day, Bernard visited Barker and tried bidding the price down from $40,000 to $30,000 or taking a loan to pay. But Barker said, I admire your entrepreneur gusto, but it's not the way I do my business. He then went to visit Mr. Reed but wasn't allowed to meet him. He waited outside the building and walked up to Mr. Reed when he saw him coming out. Bernard told Reed about wanting to rent a loan to buy Mr. Barker's house, then Reed told him to make an appointment. Barker said, you and I both know, I'm not going to get an appointment. You really should try hearing me out. Me Reed then listened to him and said would get back to him on the decision made. At night, he was sad but his wife encouraged him that they would see another house. He received a call from Mr. Barker, who had allowed him to use his name in renting the loan. Mr. Barker stood as his guarantor. At a party, Joe came to him and tried clearing doubts Bernard had about him. I'm not really who you think I am and I do invest in black people, I try to help them, Joe said. Why will you try to help me, Bernard replied. Because I see you're smart and ambitious, Joe said. He and Joe became friends that night, and had a deep conversation about real estate investment. The next day, he took his cousin to his new house and hired Matt to help in fixing the house. A white woman whose name is Mrs. Copper got angry seeing a black is going to live with her and called for the police, they came over but saw his paper were real, then left him alone. At night Mrs. Copper, you can't be here after 6 p.m. Bernard replied, a contractor can't but I can because I'm a resident. She then gasped. Next morning, Mrs. Copper left her home angry at the blacks moving in while Bernard leased remaining apartment out. Eunice tried making friends with Mrs. Copper and successfully won her over. Night time, Bernard can be seen discussing with Barker. Bernard said, fully leased. 
Wow, that's impressive, said, Barker. Barker then suggested having a partnership together. You have the knack of knowing the untapped value of a building, you will assist with the paperwork and phone calls while I function as the face to sign deals. It's a 50-50 share of profit. Barker said. That night, they both agreed to be partners, and their business blossomed, but a day came that Barker slept and didn't wake up. Barker died. His wife mourned his death but doesn't want Bernard as a business partner, so she signed little amount of money and told him off. He visited Mr. Reed but didn't get to speak to him. While leaving the building, his eye caught a signboard, and an idea popped into his mind. He told Joe about his business plan of wanting to buy the building, the tallest commercial building in downtown Los Angeles. Joe laughed, and agreed to his idea but called his plan an audacious one. The next day, they talked to Matt to be face of their business because of the racism issue. Bernard said. We want you to represent us, be us to the rest of the world. Matt replied. I don't have an idea on how to go about that. Joe then told them to meet at a field at 6 a.m. the next morning. At 6 a.m. they got there but Joe was late. Joe said. Before you learn how to talk real estate, you gotta learn how to talk to rich white folks. Then he tutored him on how to play golf, you can fake math but you can't fake knowing how to play a golf. Bernard taught him the mathematical aspect he needed to know, while Joe taught him about golf, ethics, and habits of rich people. Joe planned for him to meet Charles, the owner of the building at a club which he did and played golf with him and some other people. The said day for him to propose the business idea to Charles came, and he went prepared, having crammed the numbers, he wowed Charles with his prowess in mathematics. Charles said. How did you manage to get all these figures on your head? While Matt acted like it was normal. The deal was signed off nicely, the four celebrated their victory. And Joe and Bernard moved into the office as partners. Bernard then took his family to go visit his dad, his dad got to learn that his son had met the vice president. While his wife and child had gone to sleep, outside the apartment. His dad said, you are doing very well in Los Angeles. I guess you're right. Bernard asked, about what? Dad replied, doing white man business in another country I'm so proud of you, son. The next day, Bernard decided to have a walk around the street. Then Eunice said, take Junior with you, he needs to see where he comes from up close and he did that. Getting back to Los Angeles, Bernard advised Joe that they should have a partnership business in Texas, but Joe said it was a bad idea, they decided to try it out and successfully pulled it through. While entering the car, Joe said to Bernard, you're finally the manager of your hometown bank. They were all very happy. Matt got to know about a bank in Texas and wanted to own it, he told Bernard and Joe to help him out. The bank cost $274,000. Bernard said. I and Joe would be paying a whopping sum of $274,000. I feel we should have the final say on the company since it's our money. But Matt replied. I want to have a business of my own, a business of me having the final say but if you both want to take over the second bank, then I'll just have to step down from all the business and go back to L. A to start afresh. Bernard told Joe, oh, you said this was going to be a bad idea. Joe, yeah right. The new bank Matt wants to acquire is being supervised by Florence, who became weary of Matt when he saw the people the bank was loaning money to. He secretly followed Matt, when Matt went to meet Bernard and Joe at a restaurant and took pictures of them. Bernard and Joe gave him the money to get the new bank but he didn't make use of the same lawyer, nor the same people they used for their other business. Florence gave him people to work with and some files to sign which he did. A day came he had an issue. The came to check how the bank was faring and saw some misuse of money. Joe and Bernard tried helping out by acting as janitors but they weren't able to stay close to him while the questioning was ongoing and Matt failed. He wasn't able to defend his company. He had given out a loan that was more than 10% of the actual bank capital which was against the rule of banks. Matt tried using funds from mainland bank which Bernard bought to save him but only ended up implicating both banks and both got locked. The cops came to arrest Bernard and Joe which got Bernard angry and he almost fought with the cops. Florence was happy that their business fell off. A man came to meet Matt and advised him to betray his partners, if not, he would be the one ending up in jail. He was advised to say that they forced him into partnering with them or being the face of their business. In the court, Bernard spoke about blacks not being given the freedom to build wealth or make money. He said, Our nation's founding documents declare that all men are created equal and endeavor to create a society. 
where citizens receive the equal protection of our laws. It's a noble goal. But we all know, for many citizens it's a lie. This hearing was supposed to be about uncovering and reforming unsafe banking practices. But I think it's really about how two black men pulled off owning a bank in Texas on earth. The judge advised him to tread carefully but he continued. I can talk at length about that or I can sum it up with this the dress code. You can't get a loan, you can't own a home, you can't start a business. Which means you can't build wealth. The end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.